Folks presents to you on his talk. Hello, folks. Today, I would like to acknowledge the presence of Amos Johnson, Nagum Afiki. Amos Johnson is a social entrepreneur, minister of youth at the State of African Diaspora, and a motivational speaker. as founder and ceo of world youth summit and pc and the association of african future leaders ambaza hasan works with another organization such as iolg and faa vm where he occupies the position of international consultant and goodwill ambassador expert panel on youth affairs respectively so let's begin our talk with ambassador hasan rangoma of key sir first of all thank you so much for joining us and agreeing to share your thoughts on our platform it is really a great matter of pride pride for all of us thank you so much sir thank you for having me uh so sir before i come to the discussion i would like to ask you so you are a founder and ceo of world youth summit so i uh, request you to tell our viewers about that Uh, well uh thank you so much again for the opportunity uh my name is Hassan Rengu Fakie ambassador i am uh, a youth activist and a social entrepreneur i am uh, the founder and the ceo of uh, the world youth summit npc the world youth summit uh, is a non-profit organization uh, registered and based in south africa and represented uh, officially uh in more than 40 country uh, 40 countries across the globe Uh, so we are focused on forms where they can uh, improve uh, their talents and uh, show the, the best of themselves oh great uh, so sir moving to discussion today's discussion topic which we have chosen uh, how can we bring peace uh, into this world so sir uh, i would like to as you have already the founder of many and you uh, of many organization and also uh, you have visited many countries so what do you think what is the main reason for most of the conflict well to speak in general yeah it's true that i've been in many countries and uh, each country is uh, each country has its own uh, culture and beliefs uh, the problem the main problem of uh, peace uh, Uh, come from uh, the fact that uh, many countries many government are focusing more on um, weapons making weapons uh, instead of solving uh, the issues that they are having at hand so when they forget uh, they focus on making weapons financing projects for uh, uh, the production of uh, weapons and forgetting the problems that they are having in their government in their society in their community so uh, it becomes a very big issue in the long run so when it pops up uh, there has to be a conflict and then uh, a war uh so sir what do you think uh, uh, how we can uh, reduce it uh, or we can teach people about that there is nothing in this conflict uh, we have to be means we have to increase peace or we have to spread peace all over so what do you think what can be the measures to reduce this well i think uh, first of all everything depend on the education and the mindset of the people when Correct. you look at for example some countries like uh, yemen Uh, where there is an infinite war uh, some countries like uh, uh libya where there is a civil war some country uh, years ago like congo rwanda uh, most of the people who are uh, actors of this war are people who are uneducated uh, they didn't go to school they didn't get any education so it is easy for the people uh, for the manipulators for the true oppressors to use them and maybe uh, i don't know to use them and give them some uh, some amount of money and fool them and involve them into this totally kind of, uh, uh, yeah yeah so the main thing here to do is for government uh, i encourage government to educate to try to bring a good system of education in their countries to educate this youth uh, so that because in a, a well knowledgeable uh, person cannot carry a gun to go on the street by for no reason uh, so sir apart from education what do you think uh, can be the best step to reduce it uh, pardon i didn't get you uh, apart from education what can be the step uh, to teach people or uh, tell them that there is nothing in this all conflict we have to spread peace among all well apart from education uh, there is uh, everything not depend on yourself there is also religion because religion uh, teach us uh, teach us uh, a peace 
uh, all the religions across the world, there is no religion that teaches that teaches uh, 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 hatred. So, uh, through religion, we can uh, cultivate peace. We can try to live in harmony by loving uh, 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 each other. You understand. So, uh, apart from education, religion also is another. And all the, the government, the government should try at least to focus and try to help uh, the, their population, their community. Because there is no thing like a civil war if everything is going fine in the country. When something is going wrong and when there is when there is a war, we have to ask why there is a war. Uh, why a community is just rising itself maybe to fight against or maybe to protest about something. We need to try to find the origin of the war. When I take, for example, uh, the case of Cameroon, when the south, uh, the, the south, southwest and the northwest Cameroon uh, was, were protesting uh, against the government that they have been marginalized. So they had the reason. They had the reason, the marginalization of the government towards the people who are Anglophone. Uh, you, you understand because they thought that because they are anglophone uh, the, the government uh, um, mainly ruled by francophone people as looking at them so down so they have to protest they have to uh, 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 make their voice uh, heard by the government and if the government doesn't want to listen to them it will generate a war uh, sir i uh, appreciate sir you have put a very uh, nice point that no religious teaches us to fight and also we have to go our religious book and understand what totally it said we don't have to just start say that this is my and this is my and start writing and also we have to use our proper rights and to take our take our to get justice we don't have to just only start by getting anyone if somebody teaches that this should be not that this should then be so we don't have to come in any under any one talk of course, true. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, all the religions has one th uh, have one thing in common: peace. There is no yeah. religion, uh, in my knowledge, that teaches a uh, 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 war or maybe hatred. All the religions, uh, uh, Buddhist, uh, uh, Islam, uh, Christianism, uh, everything, Christianity, uh, all of them have uh, one thing in common: peace. Uh, so, sir, moving to my next question, which is, sir, as. Uh, I know and I would like to tell my viewers that uh, sir is also a youth minister in the state of diaspora. So sir, I would uh, request uh, you to tell about that. Uh, well, uh, that was the recent one and uh, thank you for the government of the state of African diaspora for appoint uh, appointing me as a uh, the, the the first this is the first I like the, the first uh, youth minister uh, of the state. Well, uh, I got the news uh, with uh, so much excitement and uh, so much happiness uh, because uh, I also I always advocate for the youth uh, to fight for those who cannot fight and to speak for those who cannot speak who doesn't have a voice uh, to stand for them. Uh, so it was a great news. I took it with all my strength and I pledged to do my best uh, for the uh, youth in Africa and uh, those from uh, African descent who are living in the diaspora uh, to benefit from our programs. So, so far we have been doing a lot. Uh, we have been working in partnership with my organization, the World Youth Summit, uh, to deliver to the youth uh, uh, sponsorships. Like we are going to give to the youth sponsorships in, uh, in Africa. This sponsorship is going to help them uh, to improve their uh, entrepreneurial uh, leadership, business and management skills uh, so that in the market they can be able to, uh, to find a job or maybe to self-employ themselves. Uh, apart from that, apart from the scholarship uh, project, we are also working on a very great uh, project called uh, YATEC, which is the Young African Thought for Economic Growth. Well, uh, this project is going to give the opportunity to every youth the chance uh, to bring a project uh, or an idea, an innovative idea that can be turned into a startup and uh, uh, develop its community, uh, develop the, uh, the, the continent and boost uh, the economic growth of uh, our lovely continent. Wonderful, sir. It is really, I'm feeling great to listen that, sir, the country is having you as a youth, uh, youth minister. So, sir, I have uh, my next very interesting question, uh, which is, sir, uh, how do you so, uh, see Africa in 21st century? Well, uh, this is a uh, well, it's a question 
a little bit complex question because uh, when you talk in Africa, when you talk about Africa in global, uh, well, uh, it becomes more complex. But if you were asking me maybe about uh, Kenya, about Rwanda, about South Africa, yes, I can feel maybe more comfortable to say, okay, uh, Kenya has been doing great. Uh, Rwanda has been doing great in terms of developing their tourism and activities and everything. But when you talk about Africa, then I have to globalize everything and talk in, uh, in uh, I mean, uh, talk in general. Like Africa entered the 21st century. Uh, uh, so much uh, unresolved uh, issues like the issues of poverty, uh, the issues of racial integration, the issue of um, inequality, uh, the issue of uh, food insecurity, violent conflict. Uh, so it is uh, a very great challenge for Africa that Africa faces now. Uh, nowadays, and uh, I encourage all the countries in Africa to join in one to unite themselves uh, so that they can uh, overcome all these issues. It is really a great message. So, sir, uh, what do you think? Uh, uh, what can be the steps uh, as you have uh, given us many problems which we uh, these countries have, like poverty and inequality uh, and uh, many things. So what do you think, what can be the steps to reduce is, uh, its uh, these things? The first steps uh, that, uh, the first step that I will advise every uh, uh, president in uh, Africa, uh, if uh, unity is uh, so much difficult for them to adapt, like for example, as uh, uh, Mr. Muhammad Gaddafi, this view upon him was saying, was dreaming about a, a United State of Africa. If it is so difficult for them, uh, let us have a, a, a good regional integration. If we are having a good regional integration, it will be easy for a country in uh, two countries in Africa or three countries in Africa in the same region to trade. You understand and develop each other. If, for example, Mr. Congo but, uh, has gold or diamond, pardon. Uh, means any country have we have to means uh, work towards any f any first country then we have to make it as an example and uh, many countries can learn from it right of course of course I, I, and in africa we are having regional sectors like we are having semac for the people who are only in central africa we are having another uh, uh, regional group uh, in west africa called ECOWAS. we are having one in eastern africa we are having one in southern africa if we can have this great groups and one maybe in uh, west uh, in northern africa if we can have this group uh, united i'm not talking about all the countries uniting but them reuniting through their regional i don't i don't know through a regional integration and inclusive regional integration it will be very easy for africa to be developed you understand when a country like for example a cameroon is thinking of producing a banana from jombe and exporting it uh, to uh, to Belgium or France for the people of Western uh, region of the world to eat and benefit from few, from uh, 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 little money. It is, it would be better for Cameroon to maybe trade with a country like maybe, I don't know, like Gabon or maybe uh, 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 Congo or LCR, take what LCR can offer to them and offer to LCR what they have. You understand this is regional integration and it allows the development of uh, both country and that is how we develop africa that means we have to work for globalization well i i don't advise uh, africa to go into too much globalization it's true that uh, we are in a world where you need people from uh, you need people from other continent to develop yourself you understand but not not always africa has everything Africa has 30% of the hard mineral resources. Just that is enough to be developed. And Africa has knowledgeable people, uh, people who are really great, people who are great in technology, in, industri in, in industrial fee. You understand? We can take these advantages that we are having, plus our workforce, because we are having the youngest population in the world. We can use this as our advantage, uh, uh, prone and promote uh, the regional integration and develop ourselves as ourselves. This will allow us to even have uh, the chance to be more united. And when now uh, we are united as one and have as a, a Africa as a state, it will be easy for us to fix our prices to anyone coming from the Western or the Eastern region to deal with us or to trade with us. It was a wonderful message, sir. Uh, so I would like to move on my next question, sir. Uh, what are your plannings in the future for the state of African diaspora? 
well, uh, uh, the state of African diaspora is having a government. Well, uh, when I mean government, a well-structured government, uh, they are having uh, a department for finance, a department for environment, for education, for international cooperation. You understand? It's a great government. It's just like a state. Uh, so I can't talk on behalf of, uh, 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 of the government. Like, and I can talk on themselves, uh, what is for themselves, you understand, by right to uh, think critically, ambitiously, whenever they are facing any issues. Because this problem that we are having in Africa, whenever there is a tension, we always tend to take the, the, the weapons to go on the street. It's very bad. There are many ways to protest. There are many ways to let our voice be heard. And these ways can only be learned when you learn how to think or to, when to approach a problem critically and ambitiously. And it is what we need in Africa. I want that after five years, we should be able to have African uh, uh, youth who can influence on the policies of government in Africa, who can take the front and be as uh, represent, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, represent the youth department, the finance department, where the youth have to be really uh, uh, represented. Yeah. Uh, all right, sir. Uh, so what uh, initiative and project have manifested for your position within the state of African diaspora? Yeah, as I was saying, uh, the project we were working on, we are working now on Yatek to be a successful one. Uh, Yatek is going to give uh, to the youth uh, $6,000 for a start. And also Yatek, we are also going to raise funds uh, from charities and uh, philanthropies uh, to support the project of the person who is going to win uh, the biggest prize. The, the, I mean, the biggest prize. When you win the biggest prize, it means that your idea was selected as the best ideas, the best idea. And uh, the people who are selecting these ideas are professionals and experts uh, in economic growth. People coming from the African Union, from the United Nations, and also from private sectors. So these people know how to identify uh, uh, which project is best for the development of our continent, Africa. Uh, so uh, when uh, we are going to we are going to launch this project by July, hopefully, as well as we are going to launch the scholarship project with Liberia uh, on the first July. So we'll be offering scholarship from uh, the uh, uh, for the youth. We are having close to one thousand and two hundred five hundred uh, two thousand one. Uh, 12,500 uh, scholarships today that we are going to offer to the youth in Africa. Uh, these scholarships are going to be in uh, many forms. We are not going to send money to them directly, but we are going to finance uh, professors, intellectuals, uh, experts from Europe and maybe uh, 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 America who are from African descent to go back to Africa to teach these people, to, to let them go through a training process of three to six months, which will make them ready in entrepreneurship. And at the end of the day, they are going to have a, a, a accredited certificate, which can allow them to, uh, 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 I don't know, to uh, move on with their career in the market. Wonderful, sir. Uh, so, sir, uh, I would like to ask, what are your plannings to make the youth more skilled and independent? Well. Uh, uh, I, we, will make, we will accomplish this goal through our project because our projects and uh, goals are related to the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. So achieving the Sustainable Development Goal of the United Nations is achieving everything for them, you understand? For example, when we talk about uh, SDG 4, we want to bring uh, in uh, digitalized education to the youth. But how do we bring the digitalized education to the youth who are living in rural areas? You understand so it makes us also think on how to bring internet and electricity to those people to support them our projects are humanitarian projects so we only count on the uh, on the uh, on the support of governments private sectors and uh, philanthropies yeah so through digitalized education uh, through uh, um, platforms like a world you summit where we teach them uh, the fundamentals of the united nation of the african union the agenda 2063 of the african union and the agenda of the sdg uh, 2030 of the united nation so we teach the youth we make the youth knowledgeable and uh, we involve the youth in uh, the, 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 the how can i say this in the practical life we make them to touch the reality yeah. So whenever we are bringing a program to them, we let them be the actors of those program uh, instead of just being there and be watching and see how it's going. So we believe strongly that uh, by the end of uh, our projects that we are projecting in five years, we'll be able to 
uh, deliver a quality education through our projects uh, to uh, the youth in Africa and across the globe. Uh, people from uh, Asia also, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Philippines, they are also in need of quality education. So sir, what do you think which type of skills uh, today's youth must, uh, must learn? What type of skill they must learn? I think uh, the best thing for, you mean for which continent? Because it depends. Uh, people from Africa and people from Asia, uh, from Southern Asia uh, um, uh, mainly, they are facing the same issue. They are having conflict in their countries. They are facing the issue of poverty, food insecurities. Uh, so um, we, we, we want them. What was the, your question again? Uh, I, I, I missed it. No, I'm repeating. Uh, so, sir, what do you think? Which type of skill they must learn uh, to make? Uh... What type of skill? Yeah, entrepreneurship skills, of course. Entrepreneurship skills, because it is what they need. You know, uh, the government always make us believe that, uh, or the system, the governmental system in, in education, make makes all also believe always believe that uh, when you finish your high school, you need to go to university, and after your university, you need to have your degree, and be expecting the government to give you a job. This which is which is very wrong. You understand? We need to try to inculcate in the mindset of uh, uh, the, the the youth that you don't need to wait for the government for the government to place you with a job. Even that job is not going to make you rich, or it's not going to even take care of your basic needs. You understand? You need to try to know how to self-employ yourself. Though it's not everybody who is going to be entrepreneurs uh, or maybe employers. So, but you need to be ready to know how this thing works so that in case there is any failure of the government or maybe of wherever you are working, uh, then you can be able to sustain yourself by yourself. Sir, I totally agree with your, uh, with your thoughts. Uh, so sir, as the session, uh, uh, sir, the topic of the session, which is uh, how we can uh, bring more peace into the world. So we have discussed so much, uh, so in same continuation as we have seen these days that in the USA there is one conflict going on, uh, black lives matter. So sir, what would you like to comment on? Well, uh, about the Black Lives Matter uh, movement and the conflict in uh, happening now in uh, uh, in USA with the death of uh, Mr. George Floyd, may he rest in peace. I think it generates from uh, not now. This not issue has been long, uh, has been yeah. This issue has been oh, on uh, for long ago already. Four hundred, five hundred. Yeah, long ago already. Yeah, since even more than that, like even far, far ago, like uh, since from uh, 1619, if I'm not mistaken, when the first 19 slaves, uh, that are they called slaves, uh, 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 black people, enter in, uh, I think it was Point Comfort Com in British, in, in Britain, uh, since that time, uh, things haven't been uh, uh, going uh, right, you understand? Uh, since the time that the white people thought that, uh, I mean, the Western people, they thought that they were uh, the, 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 the most uh, supreme, I, I don't know, supreme in terms of uh, race. Yeah, that they, was, uh, they were the people that uh, God only favored them. They were the people that they are on top of the race. Since that time that they came to Africa to fool us with religion, to fool us with, uh, by changing our education system and uh, culture, to bring their own and calling it civilization, since that time things have always been going wrong. So uh, the movement now happening now uh, after the death of uh, Mr. George Floyd is only the result. You understand? It's only the result of what has been going on. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that we are uh, less than people who are white. You understand? So this mindset is uh, this mindset that they are having. It's a racist uh, uh, mindset that has to be changed. And if they don't want to change, then we can stand on ourselves and stand for our right. Because uh, a ra a racism is violating uh, the rules of the human rights. You understand? Yeah. So I totally got your point. And uh, of course, we have to propose an idea that we could not uh, discriminate anywhere on the basis of caste, uh, color, sex, creed, anything. So we have to work on that. Uh, and the best thing, uh, for, I don't know you have seen or not, but uh, some white people are still supporting this. Uh, so that's the best part. It is uh, already means that they understand the ideology that uh, there's no, nothing to discriminate on this. 
there are a lot of things that changed mr ash uh, before uh, when the white people uh, before in the time in the times of uh, mr uh, uh, martin luther king when black people even far before before him when black people were trying to maybe uh, get up maybe or try to make maybe a revolution about defending their human rights they were left alone but a lot of things have changed many thing many people have understood that uh, it is not just about uh, the the black life that matters but it is a life that matters you understand that because we are human being we are not black human being we are only black because of our color and being black it doesn't mean that uh, we have to be uh, regretting why we are black we are black because we are beautiful and we are also black because god knows why we are black you understand a white man cannot live in africa in where maybe the temperature is maybe at 40 degrees celsius so uh, god knows why yeah he created each and everyone and in the world is not only black and white people there are also brown people there are also uh, pale people who are red there are also yellow people you understand yeah so this conflict always uh, between uh the white people and the the western people and the uh, uh and the uh, and the black the black community date from far long ago you understand they knew that we are intelligent they didn't came they, they didn't come to africa when we were we didn't have any education we had an education we had a religion we have our cultures but they came to us and they fooled us and i support my my, my point with uh when you read the letter of um a uh, king leopold ii in uh i think in um 1881 when he's talking about bringing a christ uh christian mm, how they call it again christianization bringing christianization to the people who already who already had a religion in africa you understand to fool them when he bought market people that were supposed to come to do market and do drugs like change things do trade with the people of africa they came with a very well planned in their in their mind you understand which was colonization and they didn't let us know that it is really what they wanted to do when you read the letter of a uh, lord uh, lord macolai when lord macolai is uh, uh, speaking about we should go to them they are very united we should go to them and try to uh, 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 i don't know to do, and try to separate them by changing their culture and changing their education system it means that we had a culture and we had an education system you understand what i'm trying to say yeah but it doesn't work now because we have learned technology we are now knowledgeable we have learned diplomacy we have learned a lot of things and the proof is that we are the one building the wall all over you understand and we can stand now as one the movement now going on shows that the black community is united more than ever and we can stand for our to, to, for the justice yeah thank you sir it was a great message and also it was a great interaction with you thank you so much sir for joining us it was a nice time with you thank you so much sir thank you i'm thankful for you for having me i'm very thankful and uh, i look forward to uh, be with you anytime thank you so much sure sir thank you so much